the next thing we're going to work on is the back of the car. We're going to work on the rear engine window, which would be like this is where the engine would be below the window that's right here. So we're going to correct a couple issues first. Like you can see the shading here is not very good. And we also want to move this back window right now. The back window we have it just straight up and down but from looking at the reference images like you can see that this angle is very like it's very angled the window is very angled so we're gonna have to add in this angle as well as correct some shading before we get started on this area and these parts as well so we're just gonna tab into edit mode and we're going to contain the bad shading again. So we're just going to go to edge select, grab these edges here. Make sure you get the one on the side and then all these do subdivide. Alt right click, Q to slide this in. Get it as close as you want it. And it's going to be a little easier if you hide this uh, fin thing. So just go to vertex select, select this vertex, select linked, H to hide. And then go up here, select these two, and press J. That'll join them. So you can see already that shading problem's gone. That is nice. So now to angle this, first what you want to do is press 7 to go to top view, Z for wireframe. So when I was talking about this before, I was a little bit wrong. Like this is actually where, this is the back window. Because it's angled so extremely that the back window actually extends beyond this. Or at least the bottom of the back window extends beyond this. The top of it, of course, is underneath. But the bottom of the back window extends beyond this piece and then has that backwards curve. So this, I believe, is the back, back window, at least the bottom of the back window, which means we're going to have to move these vertices up. So we're also going to have to move the rest of these vertices up as well so that they're out of the way. So these, like here, we're just going to take these, or this one, and snap it to this one. I'm going to take these and press Q to slide them up. And we're going to do the same here. We're just going to continue moving some of these until we get a bit better spacing so that we can move this up. So you can use snapping, you can use um, sliding with Q, uh, whatever method you'd like to use. When you get towards this area, just make sure that you're not in wireframe so that you can make sure you're selecting the correct stuff. This one's going to have a little bit more of a curve because this one has a bit of a curve. You can do the same here. Just give this a little curve too if you want. So it's a bit better spacing, not perfect. I'm going to slide these back with Q to get better spacing again. So now what we want to do is go here in the back and select one of these, then do C for circle select and get the rest. Go back to top view with 7 on the number pad. Z for wireframe and just bring these back to where this line is. and bring it over a little because you can see like it needs to come over a little like this so that it's in line with this line right here and then you want to take the middle two and bring them back like this you want these bottom lines to line up with the, the reference line because that's the actual edge of the window remember this other line is just there to contain the shading so you want this bottom line to line up with uh, the reference line. So now we have that angle to the, the window that you're supposed to have according to the reference. But you'll see we get this shading issue and to kind of help correct that we're going to select this vertex G twice and slide it till it's pretty close and do the same here and just try to make a straighter line so from here to here you want to basically a straight line. You can hold shift to make smaller adjustments until you get 
a relatively straight line. And then up here at the top, you want to do the same G twice and slide it in this direction. And that will help reduce, it doesn't get rid of, but it helps reduce that little problem. And that's about as good as we're going to get, so we're not going to worry about that. So that's the window fixed, and now we want to start making this other area. This area is uh, separate from the car, of course. This can actually, like, this whole thing can actually be lifted up so that you can get to the engine. Like, it would lift up this way so that you can get to the engine and everything in there. So we're just going to make it as a separate object because it would be in the real world anyway. So before we continue, we're just going to save it though. So we're just going to go to File, Save. So we don't lose any of our work. And now we're going to press Tab, go to Face Selection. We're going to select all these faces here. You'll notice I didn't select any of these ones here. Any, any of these little skinny ones I didn't select. Because now what we're going to do is press Control 1 and that's going to increase our selection. So that'll get all the skinny ones without having the problem of possibly selecting other stuff. The only ones we don't want are the ones in the back right here. So we want to deselect these very small ones in the back. Including this little triangular type one. So there's three on the bottom you should have deselected. And now we're going to do Shift-E to duplicate and make this a completely uh, separate mesh, or separate part. And then I just right click to cancel the movement. And then what we want to do is just bring this up slightly so that it's actually above the rest of the car. Even though it doesn't really look like it is, it is above the car. So what this will allow us to do is to be able to make this top part where the window is and this uh, honeycomb mesh is all this other stuff and then we'll be able to like open this up and then below it we can actually make the hole for the engine and we can put the engine down here which is probably something we're going to do because details like that are just they're really important to try to make it make the car look real whenever you have a window putting something behind it just makes it look so much more real so we're probably going to be doing something in terms of an engine, at least something basic. So now what we want to do is take another look at our references to look at the shape that we are trying to create. So we have like this crease line here, and then you have another crease line here. And they come not really to a triangle, but they get skinnier. Like they come closer together down to here where the mesh part ends. And you also have this other, like this part goes up, and then it goes back down, and then it goes across, of course. So you want to just try to start with the basic shape like that, get these two lines in, get this upward and then downward shape, and then we'll continue from there. So at this point we can press Shift-H to hide the rest of the car because we don't need it. And we can press 7 to go to top view, Z for wireframe. I'm not sure these lines are really 100% accurate, but we can use some of them anyway to get started. So we're going to go to uh, Vertex Select, and what we want to do, of course, is try to line up these vertices with the, the edge of this. And this one we're going to use for this entire line, actually. We're going to use for that outer line, like this, this outer crease right here, which I believe is this line and this part because this would be that line, then this other one would be the bottom line, and this would be where the mesh is, and this would be where it starts curling back down, where it starts curling back down like this, and creating that, uh, like this would be more of where the separation is, like this part right here. But anyway, we're just going to go ahead and do it instead of talking about it, so we're just going to bring this over, and we're going to bring this over, and line it up with the same <clears throat> same line that I'm lining it up with. Like I said, I don't really agree with this uh, reference 100% because like this kind of just looks like it's really small, but in comparison to the, the picture I have. But we're just going to use this for now, and we're going to move this over so that it continues in a straight line with the rest of it. 
and our straight line is actually not the best straight line. So I'm going to try and straight, straighten this out some so that it looks more like this. So that's our first line. To get the second one, we're just going to do Control R, left click, and then right click, I think. And we'll just move these over to better line up with this. Actually, this is the part I think where I really didn't follow the reference because I thought it needed to be like this area needed to be a bit wider than what the reference was because at the front, remember, like it gets pretty, the difference is pretty big. And this reference kind of just has it as a consistent distance, which is not correct. So we have to try to compensate for that and bring this a little closer and I'm going to just, just snap this on the, the Y axis so that because it looked like they weren't they weren't uh, even on the Y axis and they should be so all I was doing really is just making sure that they're closer here and then they continue to get further apart and I think I should just continue making this a little bit wider here something like that I guess is good and from a different image I figured out that like how this continues you can see kinda here that it continues like this but it doesn't stop like this edge doesn't stop at the bottom of this window it doesn't stop at the bottom of this window area it continues on beyond that and it doesn't actually continue past this. It actually stops. I don't know if we really have any good images of it. We, yeah, I guess we don't. But I did look at a different one that was really high quality. And maybe I'll put it in the description so you guys can take a look at it as well. But this actually comes to a triangle. And it stops before this back fin. So we have our vertice basically where we want it right here, but we want this to come to a triangle. So we're going to select this, shift select this, alt M at last, and then do the same here. You can actually select this one, shift select this one, and then do shift R to repeat. And in this case, repeating was just alt M at last. So it's a little shortcut that can help you out. Just make sure this kind of comes to a nice smooth triangle point. And I'm just going to look at my reference real quick to see how I did. I think it looks like I continued these curves, like you want to continue these lines. So this needs to be moved over. So select all three and Q to slide them over and do the same with this. You just want to make sure that these lines continue like this line continues straight here this continues straight here so this is basically this is basically what we want we're also going to need to continue this shape so we're going to need some more geometry and another thing we want to do is create this roundness so we're going to need more we're going to need a, a vertice for this shape and some to create the roundness as well. So we're just going to do control R and left click, right click. And we're going to bring this over to here and we're going to snap it to that point, snap it on the Y axis, bring it to this corner and we're going to do the same here. We're just going to kind of bring these over a little. And that one looks like it's already at the corner. And now we need more vertices for this. So we're going to do control R, left click, right click. And just position these accordingly as best you can based on the reference. So this is going to make, you want this curve here in the bottom and this curve here in the top. So we have that full shape now. We have this, so we can start changing this from a flat object into a three-dimensional object.
now that we have our base mesh and all the lines that we think we need laid out we can start converting this to a three-dimensional object so when you're doing this you want to just look at which points need to move and which points need to stay in place so like I talked about how this curve continues on and then it meets up basically right here where you can't really see it but so this point that where they meet up would not be moved but all the rest of these points that are on this line would need to be moved in a vertical direction they need to be moved up so that we get this shape so this point in other words would not be moved and all these other points here need to be moved up however if I can get a good picture okay this one's okay I guess so it continues on and then it has a sharp drop off and it actually it drops off and stops like more more like here where this vertex would be and not totally at the window so it stops like here so this is the vertex that's not going to be moving this is the vertex that's not going to be moving and the rest of these in between if I can select them all need to be moved in a vertical direction so to do this I'm just going to press 3 to go to side view and just bring these up and Z for wireframe and then I'm going to press R to rotate and get a basically straight line between these two and I just want to get the height at the correct point so this is pretty good I think something like that is not bad probably you could go a little higher if you wanted and then just rotate again in side view so you have something more like that so this is where that mesh would be and this is that the highest curved point here and instead of actually being a straight line uh, let me see which picture this one you can tell that it's a curved line so this we have to make some curvature to this line instead of leaving it as a straight line so to do that we're just gonna go one vertex at a time bring it bring it up a little and add some curvature to this section so that it's not just a straight line it's a curved line instead so something like that should be fine and then in between this area we also wanted to add curvature to this so this needs to be brought up and you just want to do something similar just add curvature to this until you're happy with it so like that looks that looks fairly nice and let's take a look at this okay so this part needs to be brought up as well almost to the same level as this other area as this other area so you kinda wanna match it the curvature you kinda wanna make a similar curvature to what you had before something like that's probably okay you can't really see the shape yet but we will once we start adding adding in um, supporting edges which we may just do right now possibly let me see actually I want to just compare this because this looks a little different here okay so that's what the problem is 
these need to be moved up some so you're just going to alt right click and press Q to slide these up basically to where this bottom part is right here something like that so that we get that fall off there you can't really see it yet so okay what we want to do now is add in those support loops to make these edges more visible so we're going to select these and all the way to the top so you want to select all these subdivide alt and right click Q to slide it over this is going to make that edge more defined more visible and then in vertex select you want to join these two with J and now you're going to start to see that we have that crease right there and we're going to do the same on this other side and actually first I just want to move this vertex slightly so we're going to select all these subdivide alt and right click Q to slide and then join these vertices so now you can see we're getting that shape we have that shape we want but this front looks a little off and the reason for that is because it kind of comes to a triangular point on this so like you have this shape and then you have it coming down like a triangle so what we can do is take these vertices these four I believe Oh, okay so that's what I did actually what I did is I took these and I uh, took this one shift select this one alt M at last do the same here merge those so we basically merge these two over to these two and then take these two and press Q slide it over so I actually made it into a triangle to get that effect right there so in order to get that separation like I have on this one where you get this nice this nice look here kind of similar to what you have right here so in order to do that we're just going to make sure we're in edit mode by pressing tab 7 for top view, Z for wireframe switch to face select select these faces with whatever selection method you prefer I'm using circle select which is C just make sure you get this whole area that is uh, colored in black get all the faces in this area and then we can press I to inset B for border do a small inset but not too small maybe something like that is good and then we're gonna do control R and add in a loop cut between these two areas but we're actually gonna add in three loop cuts so we're gonna mouse wheel up twice until you have three loop cuts should say three number of cuts down here three then just left click right click and then alt right click on this middle edge so you should have two below it two above it Z for wireframe get a better view of this and do alt s bring it down a little and now you can see we're getting that separation effect that we have and it actually may have helped the shading up here a little too maybe that was a problem from before you can also still adjust like if you think your uh, if you think your lines are not really as nice as you want them like they're not perfectly straight or whatever you can still go back in wireframe and still adjust these slightly to you know suit your suit your needs whatever you think you need you just want to make sure you do uh, wireframe when you're doing this because there's there's a few hidden hidden vertices down there so you can still go back and change the curve of your shape if you want to like for example I want to move these over a little just to see if it'll help the shading at all for the top but this looks pretty good this looks pretty accurate as far as 
what I'm looking for. So we're just going to go ahead and save this by going to File and Save. 